John, we, we, we've covered a lot of, of sort of the near term, what's happening on the ground. But from your perspective, could you kindly give me the kind of bigger picture on what this does for venture back deals in the tech Israeli system over a matter of months or years going forward? Will this have a lasting effect? Well, if you actually take that sort of frame of reference and you look several years down the road, there'll be no question that we'll be bigger, stronger, more money invested. Uh, Israel has developed, as, as you know and have uh, been covering, this incredible tech investment ecosystem. It's hard to find any significant venture players who aren't active in terms of backing Israeli companies. You know, Israel has this huge delegation of companies traded in New York. Uh, today, 100 unicorns are operational in Israel. Our crowd is perhaps the largest uh, democratic venture platform gl investing globally, but investing from Israel. So uh, clearly, over the next you know, couple of weeks and, and months, uh, depending upon how long these hostilities last, we're going to be facing challenges. But unfortunately, we have a lot of experience doing this and successfully. And if you look at the uh, past performance, every time we've gone through this uh, unfortunate uh, episodes, and uh, such as a war, it's hard to call it an episode, uh, we, ha we emerge at the end of the process stronger, bigger. And I think that based on just listening to some of your guests today, uh, Israel's strength in AI and in deep tech is going to bring lots of capital and lots of return to uh, venture investors in the Israeli market. Uh, John, I appreciate the, the sort of unique structure of, of our crowd, how investors can get access to private startups, 427 direct portfolio companies, and then there are fund companies as well. Has there been a need for cash injection um, oh. this week because of what's happened to, to continue well, to it's, it's be operational? It's not, no, it's not like that kind of uh, either send me money this week or, or in trouble. As you know, there's been a, a you know, quite marked uh, re retraction in the amount of venture money uh, committed by funds into ve uh, venture backed startups. Worldwide, it's been 50, 60, 70 percent down uh, year to year, depending upon which area. Israel shares that downturn. So the problem we're facing is that. You know, we are already in a capital constrained environment where companies are cutting their costs, letting people go, you know, trying uh, uh, very, very hard to make sure that they can, uh, you know, get to break even or close and then make sure they can continue to develop their businesses. Then this comes along and this is not great in terms of a, a capital raising environment, but we're stepping it up. OK, we're going to be, you know, launching many new deals and bringing more capital in. And we're heartened by what we've seen as the response of the global venture community to the Israeli tech community during the last several days. It's incredible. There's a site called Tech Condemning Terror, where there are simply this huge list of people who are supporting Israel and making actual uh, commitments into the nonprofit sector to help families that have been stricken by this or people who are in need. And, you know, leading funds like Insight or uh, General Catalyst, big companies, an Israeli company like Mobileye, are making, in some cases, uh, multi-million dollar commitments, okay, to support Israel. So we hope that that won't just be on the nonprofit side, but there'll be an outpouring of support in terms of making investments in what's traditionally been a, a great place to invest venture capital. Uh, John, just very quickly, based on, on what you just said, it is worth noting that Hamas has been designated a terrorist organization by the US and, and the European Union. I, I want to end on asking what's unique about Israel's tech talent. I, I note that NVIDIA was due to hold its AI summit Sunday, Monday of next week in Tel Aviv and canceled for obvious reasons. But, but from the AI perspective, what is it that Israel has that other countries or regions don't? We have resilience, right? In other words, there, today we're facing a crisis, but there are crises all over the world. In the Ukraine, in you know, Asia, uh, there's a food crisis, a climate crisis. But we are skilled at navigating through difficult times. And we don't take no for an answer. We're pretty you know, aggressive people. We're sweet and we're loyal. We work really hard. Uh, and 
in terms of the AI area in particular, we have remarkable companies who are not only developing uh, generative AI or broad platforms, but we have companies that are also developing incredible expertise in these vertical areas, as the one such you just spoke about in terms of AI for shopping. And uh, I'm going to call Sebastian yes. with some really interesting deals that we can talk about. But the, the reality is that we are going to, we already are leaders in AI, and uh, Sam was just here uh, from OpenAI, but we are going to go beyond AI into all the areas where Israel is strong, whether it's cybersecurity, where 40 cents on every dollar is invested in Israel worldwide, whether it's ag tech or food tech, where Israel, more money was invested in alternative protein than the entire European Union, okay, so in, in Israel alone, in the cloud, in sports tech, in mobility. And I think that this will continue to grow. We're going to get through this uh, war successfully as yes. we have for the last 75 years, and we look forward to working with our global partners.